Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to do a simple hands-on lab on learning how we can leverage DuckDB on AWS Lambda uh, running on a Docker containers. So the goal is to uh, leverage uh, DuckDB on Lambda functions uh, and the solution looks something like this, right? When a Lambda function is invoked with a certain parameters or a payload, right? Each Lambda invocation will have its own unique DuckDB instance and then uh, that DuckDB can uh, query your Apache hoodie, Apache iceberg, Delta Lake or Parquet files, right? This solution is really, really great because number one, it is cost effective and cheap to implement it, right? Uh, you can easily hook this up to an API such as Fast API, Flask API or API Gateway. You can schedule it through a Lambda function, right, on a cron. So that being said, this solution is great for, uh, you know, data set that has few hundred million uh, rows, but every solution has its pros and cons. So of course, for larger data set, please do your own benchmarking and testing and to see if it fits your use case, right? So this video, let's, let's learn how to implement this solution, right? All right, so now let's begin the lab. All right, come to the GitHub and copy the repository URL and issue a command git clone and we're gonna clone the repository locally. As you can see, I'm gonna CD into that now. So I have the repository cloned locally, okay? Now I'm gonna open that in my uh, code editor like IntelliJ. You should see a file called upload.shell. This particular um, uh, shell script will upload, uh, you know, mock data, Delta Lake, Hoodie, Iceberg, and some Parquet files on S3, so we can play. And you'll see a folder called Data Lake Sample, right? So copy the path, and then of course, if your uh, path is different, make sure you replace this particular path. This is very, very important. I'm, I'm just doing that right now, okay? And then copy the bucket name where you wanna, you know, of course uh, have it. So I'm gonna use this particular bucket for the demo. So I will simply replace the bucket name over here, okay? Now, what we need to do, come to the terminal again. We're gonna give ch, before that again, Make sure your uh, AWS 3 LS, make sure your AWS uh, CLI is configured, right? I have I have it configured, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give permission. So chmod plus x dot slash upload dot shell. And now I'm gonna about to execute that. Oops, uh, dot slash upload. Wait, I'm not in the directory or what? Uh, yeah, I am, okay, so dot slash. That is a little weird. Why it is not auto-completing? Usually it does just auto-complete. So chmod plus x dot slash upload. Okay, and dot slash upload. Oh yeah, now it did. Okay, perfect. So I executed that. Okay, and now um, it's gonna upload the sample uh, files on S3. So if I uh, refresh here, you have some data to play with. You have uh, an iceberg table, uh, if you can probably see, right? data metadata. You also have a hoodie table. Uh, here you can see a hoodie table, right? And then you also have a Delta table, as you can see, and then some Parquet files. So you have all varieties, right? So you can basically perform the lab. All right, so the step two, after you have uploaded some mock data is, uh, we will come to the Docker file. Uh, in the project repository, you have a Docker file. And you see this environment variable where you see access and secret key, paste your AWS access, paste your AWS secret key. I'm gonna pause the video, paste it, and then go to the next step, okay? So make sure you do this step. So I have, uh, you know, added my credentials there, okay? So now the next step. Uh, so now we basically have to build the image, right? And we can use docker build minus t, duckdb lambda dot. Dot means, hey, look for the docker file in the current working directory. So I'm gonna come here and paste the command. I think my docker is not running. So I will uh, quickly start my docker desktop. And this should take about a couple of seconds to start. Okay, and now I'm, I'm gonna try it again. So let's say, okay, perfect. So now it's building the Docker image. As you can see, the build uh, is complete. And now I would be running the Docker uh, 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 the, the Docker image, right? So again, uh, when you are building AWS Lambda on a Docker container, you can test it out locally, right? I have videos about that and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna run this uh, uh, Lambda function locally with the following command and the image that I just built. And here you can see my now uh, AWS Lambda uh, is running on a Docker container locally. So now I can test it out. All right, so now it's time to test, right? It's easy, right? So now let's see. So remember, I made this payload so generic that all it does, it takes a query, right? 
and then it takes an extension. Extension meaning uh, if you want to install any particular library, right? Such as Delta, AWS, HTTP, uh, HTTP FS or Iceberg. So the, the Lambda function is so generic that given an extension, it will install it and then it will execute the query. That's all it had to do, right? So you can execute aggregates or, or any complex queries right, uh, on that, right? So here I'm going to show you first for a, a parquet file. Here you can see select average uh, from uh, read parquet and I give, I'm giving it a parquet file, right? Uh, which is again uh, uh, a, a nice way to execute queries on DuckDB, right? Through a Lambda function running on Docker container. So I ran that and here you can see the Lambda function was invoked and I got the response back, right? As you can see. Cool, right? Now let's 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 try out probably I don't know Delta Lake, right? So similarly, for this I need uh, the extension Delta on DuckDB, AWS, and HTTPFS, right? And similarly, I just do a count and I give the path to the Delta table. So you see how uh, generic it is, right? So let's test out Delta right now. So as you can see, right, uh, I have all the uh, table formats here, right? So Delta here, right? So similarly, look how generic it is, right? All we do is pass in a query, right? And pass in the extension. For this, I want to use Delta AWS and HTTPFS. So it's the, the Lambda function is so generic that given an extension, it will install those extension and it's going to compute uh, that uh, aggregate that you gave it, right? So now I'm going to try out that. So uh, here is my Lambda function running locally on a Docker container. And here on my second terminal, I'm going to fire a curl command and see how fast we got the response, right? The count is 10, of course, uh, we were able to query that uh, Delta table. So that's about it for the demo, right? I have nothing more uh, on the demo side. So I hope you have enjoyed. Again, the, the, the solution is simple, right? It is the simplicity, right? And of course, it is cost effective as well, right? Now, of course, test it out on your know, data set, see how it works, make sure, uh, you know, there are no errors. So at the end, always do your own testing, do your own benchmarking, and then adopt something in production, right? With that being said, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, watching the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comment section below, and I will be more than happy to uh, probably, uh, you know, reply once I have some time. Uh, keep smiling, uh, keep programming, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.